Mr. Treadway, you are now recognized. Good afternoon, Chairman Smith, Chairman Kelly, Ranking Member Moore, and members of the committee. My name is Tom Treadway, and I'm president of Erie Molded Packaging, a privately held, family-owned manufacturer founded right here in Erie, Pennsylvania. I appreciate the opportunity to discuss critical tax provisions with you today and welcome you to the Keystone State. For more than 40 years, Erie Molded has been creating custom injection molding parts and integrated packaging solutions for customers all over the country. My father, who was also an Erie native, had the desire to contribute to Pennsylvania's manufacturing sector after running a successful string of businesses on the West Coast in the 70s. He founded the company here in 1982 and has been a pillar of our community ever since. For those visiting our state who might not be familiar with Pennsylvania's iconic architecture, our state nickname is central to who we are as people. A keystone is, the, is in the center of an arch that holds the other stones in place. It is the strongest and most critical part of the structure. And once you know what, <coughs> excuse me, and, and once you know what they are, you will surely recognize the symbol across the state. The stone reflects Pennsylvania's historic and political importance in America's early years. The U.S. tax code also functions as a keystone for our great nation. Manufacturers across the country face unique challenges every day. When our keystone is strong, such as having pro-growth tax code, we are able to build something great. However, beginning in 2022, our tax code began to develop cracks, weakening the entire structure. Tax provisions that had either been in the code for decades or enacted as part of the 2017 tax reform began expiring in 2022, and there are more damaging changes on the way next year. A weakened tax code, severe worker shortages, supply chain disruption, and competition from abroad have significantly impacted Pennsylvania's manufacturing community. I want to thank all the members on this subcommittee who supported the Tax Relief for American Families and Workers Act earlier this year, and I'm calling on Congress to finish the job by getting this bill signed into law. This legislation would allow provisions from the 2017 tax reform, such as domestic R&D expensing, interest deductibility standards, and full expensing provisions to be extended until 2025. However, Congress has a major tax battle ahead of it next year when crucial tax policies are set to expire, directly impacting manufacturers here in Pennsylvania and across America. In the years following TCJA, Erie Molded was able to invest nearly $7 million in new capital equipment purchasing, thanks to full expensing. Along with this much needed equipment, we also were able to create new positions across our team and deliver high quality products to our customers. Full expensing is already phasing out and is set to completely expire in 2027. This is devastating for our manufacturers and has caused us to delay our own equipment purchases. Another harmful change that went into effect is the requirement to amortize our R&D expenses rather than being able to deduct them in the year incurred. This is a massive change for us as historically 90% of our R&D expenses went to our engineering payroll. That means that limiting R&D doesn't just limit innovation, it also has a direct impact on people's jobs here and here. Congress not allowing manufacturers to immediately expense R&D directly translate to fewer quality jobs in the manufacturing sector, while our foreign competitors are implementing vastly beneficial R&D benefits. This change also caught me and many other manufacturers in our community completely off guard. In 2023, a full year after the R&D change, I was presented with taxable income that was almost six figures higher than I had been anticipating. Changes like this mean I have to spend more time with my accountants and lawyers to figure out the best way to prepare for our future instead of growing my business. Finally, EMP is, or, is organized as a pass-through, meaning when the 20% pass-through deduction expires at the end of 2025 and the individual tax rates increase, our tax bill will be significantly higher. Many small manufacturers are organized as pass-throughs, so our sector will be disproportionately harmed by the expiration of this deduction severely hampering our growth trajectory. Similarly, since many family-owned manufacturers consist largely of e-liquid assets, we are disproportionately impacted by the estate tax changes also coming in 2025. I urge every member of this committee to preserve those and other pro-growth provisions which allow manufacturers to function as the backbone of our economy and compete on a global scale. I once again want to thank members of this subcommittee for inviting me here today. 
I hope your time in our great state leaves you with a lasting impression as you return to work in D.C. and you keep the keystone in mind as you debate our tax code's future. Thank you.